This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Bennett, it's the Ramble. Why we do it, I have no idea. You know, I've been doing this for what, over four years, I think? Something like that, I guess. Yeah, and, uh, let's see, 2013, um, let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17 in April. So we're going into our fifth year doing this. And we do it every night and uh, have the same size audience we had when we, maybe a little less than when we started off. And at times I just get to wonder whether this was, is worth it, man. You know, I only do it because, well, I don't have I don't have a broadcast outlet anywhere. But I, you know, if, if tomorrow a radio station wanted me, I probably would. Uh, and they said it's either this or that. I'd probably take that. You know, uh, I I don't want to gripe about it, but it's it's somewhat frustrating. It's frustrating also because. There's a certain ageism that exists in the listening audience uh, to uh, these programs. Um, in that, uh, if I were young and a woman with big tits, uh, I would probably get a huge audience. But because it's a bunch of old guys talking about their ailments at times, uh, it doesn't amount to more than, uh, well, what it amounts to. So, you know, I guess I, guess I should just be happy with the face. Some people would be happy with the the amount of audience I have, you know, it, it, it approaches, uh, you know, who knows how many people a night, but uh, uh, some night is, and last, a couple of weeks ago, we were getting huge numbers on the, on the, um, on the video, and uh, now it's going back down to less. Uh, it's really strange. Who knows? Who knows what the dynamics are, and whether the, the, the analytics that they're putting out are correct or whatever. But I do know that we don't have a huge audience, all right? And uh, I'm used to having a huge audience, at least in broadcasting and radio. In the Internet, a huge audience is 1,000 people. Really. You know, there's some people who are playing out there to three people. Uh, and uh, uh, it, I guess they do it because they're young and... They're trying to figure out what they're doing with their life. I'm older, and I'm used to knowing what the audience wants and giving it to them. But apparently I may have lost that. I don't know. But we certainly um, could stand for you to go tell your friends to listen to us, to check it out, uh, so that you can find out they can, you know, hear what we're all about. And then they can judge for themselves that we suck. So, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, here we go. Got my stuff. I, I want to talk about a couple of things tonight before we uh, go to our citizens panel. And um, uh, oh, don't take any of what I just said as meaning that I'm going to like dump this whole thing because I just might dump this whole thing. Anyway, um, where were we? Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, today the Federal Communications Commission did what we feared and they passed uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the end of net neutrality. Now, I know that this is something, and I, I've, tr I've explained it before, and I'll explain it again, do a little thumbnail sketch of it. But when people do reports on, uh, uh, on, 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 on this whole thing uh, about the uh, network neutrality, they don't really know how to explain it simply. All right? So I'll explain it to you simply. It, it, what it really does is it deregulates the cable companies and allows them to do whatever they want to with their Internet service. Uh, they can throttle your signal if they don't want you to get certain programs. Uh, they can maybe not even run certain channels. For instance, let's say, and this is a good example, today Disney... Uh, announced they were buying for $52 billion Fox, all Fox's 
um, cable and motion picture properties. All right. Uh, and let's say, uh, oh, I don't know, Comcast, which runs a cable system, doesn't like the fact that Disney is starting up a Disney channel. They are going to start a, a, a channel where they're going to be a repository, I guess, for almost every 20th century Fox film ever made, every Marvel movie ever made, every Disney movie ever made. What else are they going to own? They, they, they're going to own a lot of shit. Okay, and let's say they, they, they're going to start their own channel. That's what they say they're going to do, and that's, that's probably why they're paying $52 billion for Fox. They want to stock the pool. And now let's say Comcast, who owns Universal, doesn't like that. Well, now what Comcast can do is say, I'm not going to let Disney sing, Signal come through to my um, uh, customers. In other words, they just black it out. Or maybe, you know, maybe Disney will buy a, a cable outlet or buy some cable outlets and become an ISP and then say, well, I don't want Universal's picture, so I'm not putting Comcast on. In other words, what happens is they're going to be able to dictate what happens. And if you notice, in anticipation of this, two things have happened, two significant things have happened in anticipation of this. First of all, you will notice the amount of cable organizations buying up movie companies and movie properties, okay? Um, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, so that they will have materials to be able to put on their own systems themselves, uh -huh. okay? And then they can shut out those other systems. They can say to Netflix, oh, we don't want Netflix on our system. And there's nothing, there's nothing Netflix can do about it. There's no law saying that uh, Comcast can't shut out Netflix or uh, Verizon can't knock them out or whatever. So consequently, what we're dealing with here, folks, is, 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 is a question of you being able to, to use the Internet like you've been using the Internet and to shop around for what you want and be able to get what you want, be able to get your Amazon Prime or get your Netflix or get your Showtime or get your, uh, uh, what's the other one, Epics is another one, and uh, um, there are quite a few others. Now, you know, they keep talking about this slow lane, fast lane, and I think that makes it too complicated for people to understand. Uh, what that simply means is that, you know, they can say how they're going to throttle any particular signal to their customers so that if they don't like Netflix, they throttle them very slowly and therefore they can't even send you a 4K signal, all right? But here's the crux of it so you understand it in a nutshell. Every month you get a bill for your electricity and it says the electric bill this month is 50 bucks, let's just say. I wish it were in my case. I suck electricity out like the whole neighborhood dims when we do our show. Um, let's say that's that you get the bill for $50 a month. It doesn't say on that bill, well, you know, we're going to charge you more for your TV set than we're going to charge you for your electric blanket. Okay? Do you get it now? In other words, they send you one bill and that's it. They send you, then they send you the electricity to use it. Here, they're going to be able to tell you, well, you know, if you want Netflix, we're going to have to charge you more. Oh, really? Yeah, because that's an extra added amount of bandwidth. We have the, we're going to charge you for that. You don't like that idea? You know, you don't like that idea. Or, hey, we don't like Alex Bennett's opinion. We're not even going to let his program be broadcast on our Internet service providing. And I, you go, what? You know. Now, in anticipation of this, i got to tell you, here's another. I told you there were two things that were in anticipation of this. The fact that, that these cable companies are starting to buy up media companies. Okay. But number two, and this one happened the other day. I got a notification in, in, online. As of January 1st, your bill for Netflix will be going up $2. Now, why now all of a sudden is it going up $2? You know, I've had them a long time. And I only had them, I think, raise it once. 
I'm, I'm thinking about it. I, I can only remember once, maybe I'm mistaken in my addled old age, maybe it was two times, and then it was just a dollar. But now all of a sudden they're upping it two dollars? Why? Oh, well, they say so we can buy, buy, make better movies and we can provide you with better programming. Well, it's number one, it's an anticipation of somebody like... Uh, like uh, 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 Disney buying 20th Century Fox and saying we're going to put it on our own cable system and then saying that Netflix can't have Marvel movies anymore, can't have Disney films anymore, can't have 20th Century Fox pictures and all of that. So they're going to have to start producing more of their own stuff. But it's also an anticipation of one other thing, that these cable companies are going to tell them that, well, they're going to have to start paying more to be on their system. So, you know, Verizon, like my system, Fios, could say to them, hey, uh, Netflix, you know, you make a lot of money. Uh, we want more money out of you to be able to be carried on our system. You, know, you don't want to pay it to us? Well, then we don't have to run it because there's no net neutrality. Now, you may say, well, these are just people with a lot of money and big companies fighting with each other and playing pissing matches, and that's true. But you're in the middle of that pissing match. And what's going to happen is your cable bill is going to go up because what's going to happen is the excuse that, say, Fios is going to use or Comcast is going to use or Spectrum is going to use or whatever your witless little cable company happens to be, their argument is going to be, well, you know, when you watch Netflix, you're using a hell of a lot of bandwidth and you have to pay for that bandwidth. And so they'll throttle you down if you're using Netflix and, you know, don't want to pay them extra. This is the kind of thing that's going to go on with no more net neutrality. Now, the argument they make is that, well, net neutrality, uh, uh, you know, uh, existed, didn't exist a few years ago and everything was fine. Yeah, that was a few years ago. But the climate has changed. A few years ago, when net neutrality came into being, Netflix was hardly uh, a consideration. Okay, uh, so that that was that that was just something that that's me turning something on here. Um, uh, they, you know, so it, it, the 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 fact that oh yeah, it worked fine before and it'll work fine again is not really true. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to do things at the same time that I'm talking to you. So, you know, what we're, what we're talking about here is we're talking about uh, uh, your ability to get this program, to get what programs you want to get, and to be able to get them uh, when you want them uh, without having to pay extra money. So net neutrality being done away with is a terrible, terrible thing. It is not the same as it was, you know, they say five years ago, whenever Obama brought in uh, net neutrality as the law of the land, um, things were different. It was a different landscape. And, you know, were there not uh, net neutrality, we don't know that with the on influx of n Netflix and so on, that they would be as big as they are if their carriage wasn't equal to to my carriage. You know what I'm saying? Is this all making sense to you? Because this is this is the kind of thing when you say net neutrality, it's not a good term to explain it. But it's another deregulation in favor of big business. And that you're you're just not going to have any say so over what you're getting through your your ISP. And now you say, well, you know, but it's a competitive world. This is what Phil will call it and say, well, it's a competitive world, and these people just Competition will drive prices down. All right. I want to ask you a question. This applies to cable companies, right? How many cable companies can you subscribe to? Huh? What? I'm, I'm listening for your answer. In most markets, there's just one cable company. In fact, in New York, there's only one cable company, but somebody circumvented that, Verizon, by starting Fios, which was fiber optic. So it wasn't considered cable. So we do have a choice here. So maybe we won't be charged extra for Netflix because Spectrum is competing against Fios and Fios is competing about Netflix. But if you're in an area where all you got is Comcast, 
Forget it. They're gonna they're gonna stick a put a stick up your ass and twirl it around. So that's what's what's this is all about. It's a sad day in Mudville. Uh, you know, I talk about eh, why am I doing this? Uh, I, I, you know, it, it, for the small amount of people that do listen to it, why do I why do I do it every night? And uh, you know, something like this makes me even ask the question: Will I be able to do it every night? Will I be able to get this signal out there in any cogent form for you to, to for you to to see? Now, you aren't going to notice the differences immediately, but I already have because my Netflix bill is going up $2 a month. So let that be a warning to you. By the way, two million, two, two, um, there are 100 million subscribers to Netflix around the world, and if they raise every one of them $2, huh? that's $200 million a month more that they have coming into their pockets. 200 million. Uh, and if you want, uh, 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 if you then double, go over, you know, go do that over 12 months, uh, that's uh, like uh, $2.5 billion more a year that Netflix has in their pockets. But I think they're anticipating the end of net neutrality, the purchase of other studios by Disney, who's then going to start, you know, and whatever happened to antitrust, that doesn't even seem to play into this. Let me talk about one other thing, okay? Uh, and and uh, um, I, this is another thing we've been talking a lot about. And it, it just bothers me more and more. I want to read you something by uh, a guy by the name of, um, uh, boy, my mind is going. I, I really, you know... I, Tavis Smiley. Um, he, he he wrote the statement today. As you know, his his show has been taken off of PBS um, uh, because of sexual accusations. Uh, and he was of the show that went on after or before Charlie Rose. So now you got Charlie Rose gone on the same thing, and also Tavis Smiley. And I guess next is, uh, if we're thinking they're getting there, PBS is finding, rooting this kind of thing out within their ranks, that maybe Big Bird will be next, you know. But anyway, here's Tavis's statement today. On the eve of the 15th season of the 3,000th episode of my nightly talk show, I was shocked as anyone else by PBS's announcement today. Variety knew before I did. I have the utmost respect for women and celebrate the courage of those who've come forth to tell the truth. To be clear, I've never groped, coerced, or exposed myself inappropriately to any workplace colleague in my entire broadcast career covering six networks and 30 years. Never, ever, never. PBS launched a so-called investigation of me without ever informing me. I learned of the investigation when former staffers started contacting uh, me to share uncomfortable experience of receiving a phone call from a stranger asking whether I had ever done anything to make them feel uncomfortable and if they could provide names of persons to call. After 14 seasons, that's how I learned about the inquiry from the streets. Only after being threatened with a lawsuit did PBS investigators reluctantly agree to interview me for three hours. If having a consensual relationship with a colleague years ago is the stuff that leads to this kind of public humiliation and personal destruction, heaven help us. The PBS investigators refused to review any of my personal documentation, refused to provide me the names of any accusers, refused to speak to my current staff, and refused to provide me with any semblance of due process to defend myself against allegations from unknown sources. Their mind was made up. Almost immediately following the meeting, this story broke in variety as an exclusive. And indeed, I learned more about these allegations reading the variety story than the PBS investigator shared with me, uh, the accused, in our three-hour face-to-face meeting. My attorneys were sent a formal letter invoking a contractual provision to not distribute my programming, and that was it. Put simply, 
PBS overreacted and conducted a biased and sloppy investigation which led to a rush judgment and a trampling on a reputation that I've spent an entire lifetime trying to establish. It's time for a real conversation in America so men and women know how to engage in the workplace. I look forward to actively participating in that conversation. And that was the statement released by Tavis Smiley. I have a tendency to believe him. You know, just like we say, you know, um, um, when a woman complains, guys don't want to believe them. Well, you know, when a guy who's been accused of this says something, they want, don't want to believe them. They, want to, they don't want to believe them, too. You know, um, it is a... Okay, let me, this was my thinking on, let me see if I can get into a coherent uh, mindset here, because I still have kind of a cold here, and also I'm aged. Anyway, um, what's happening here is very reminiscent to me of when I was growing up, and I lived through what was called the McCarthy era. Now, most of you people don't remember the McCarthy era. You weren't around to deal with it. You may have seen movies about it, you know. The Ed Murrow movie that Clooney did, good example of, uh, of movies that have been done about it. But basically, basically, most of you weren't around for that. But I was. And, uh, you know, I always like to tell the story about the time I went. My father was going down to protest outside the city hall in San Francisco because the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee was there, and he wanted to protest it. And uh, so I decided to go into the city hall and I went into the room where they were holding it. I guess because I was a kid, they thought that was cute and they just let me through. And I sat there and I watched as they took a morning show host who I used to listen to every morning and love his show and absolutely completely destroy him with innuendo. You know, have you now ever been a member of the Communist Party? And when you refuse to testify, which you have every right to do, and a lot of people just didn't say, didn't didn't answer that question because they felt that their question is American shouldn't be, their Americanism should not be questioned and they should not have to attest to their patriotism. But nevertheless, it happened. And it was a horrible time. And a lot of people were out of work. People wound up in this thing called Red Channels uh, that went out to all the broadcasters. And if your name was in it, you didn't work anymore. Okay? If you were in Hollywood and, uh, the uh, uh, groups there uh, said you were a communist or that you had communist affiliations. They didn't stop to ask questions. They just fired you. There was a group of people called the Unfriendly Ten who were hauled before the House on american Activities Subcommittee, one of which was Dalton Trumbo, and they did do a movie about him recently. And uh, they refused to testify under the grounds that it might tend to incriminate them, and they all had to go to jail all because they were simply accused of something. And they lost their jobs, and uh, they, lo they lost their jobs, and they, they, they um, lost their income. They, many of them lost their careers. There were a lot of actors involved in being boycotted. Uh, Zero Mostel, who you may or may not remember, uh, was one of them. There were many, many actors. I could uh, go find you a list and read them for you, but we won't do that who simply were put out of work because of innuendo. And that's what's happening here. This is a revisit in a very modern form to the McCarthy era. Uh, people being accused of things that they perhaps didn't do, and then a company like, P a group like PBS Company, they call themselves a public service, but they're not. Um, um, firing somebody without even sitting down and asking him whether these charges were true and by leveling the charges to him and giving him a chance to answer it. I mean, this is the kind of thing that went back in the McCarthy era. And I think what turned out in the beginning with Harvey Weinstein to be a day of reckoning for those guys who, you know, were taking their power a little too seriously, uh, it has turned into a witch hunt. Just an absolute witch hunt, in which if you're just named, you're out. Tavis Smiley, 
I think, puts it very nicely. He says, I, I've spent my life trying to build my reputation, and it's being torn down like in one day by these people and by a company that is not willing to do the due diligence it takes to prove that I didn't do it or to look into it and see what the severity of what I supposedly did. And these uh, accusations go back 30 years. Well, so did the accusations of having been a communist to a lot of these people back in the day. 30 years earlier, they were communists when it was, in a, when it was a fad, and it was no longer a fad. They said, fuck that, you know. It's like my father said, he said, you know, I was going to become a communist, but then I realized the only people that helped was Russia, so I didn't. Uh, but he said everybody around me was like flirting with it, and they, with good reason. There had been a depression. People were out of work, and the capitalistic system had proved to be faulty, and they were looking for answers, and one of the answers was communism. So now, 30 years later, they're all before a committee. Are you now or have you ever been, been a member of the Communist Party? And if you could have said, well, I used to be, but I'm not now, and I, you know, I just didn't believe in it. That's why I got out of it. That wasn't good enough for them. Then you lost your job. You lost your ability to work. There were directors who lost their jobs, you know. I mean, I remember my father, I've told this story before, but we were at the Hungry Eye in San Francisco, I think going to see Professor Erwin Corey. And my father said, see that guy running the spotlight? I said, yeah. He says, used to be a big movie director in Hollywood. I said, then why is he running the spotlight here at the Hungry Eye? He says, this is the only job he could get. The House on american Activities Subcommittee went after him and put them out of work. So when I see this happening, I know a lot of you women out there going, oh, well, this is a different thing altogether. No, it started out as a different thing. It has turned into a witch hunt, okay, in which people are not giving, given their proper due rights to say what happened. Now, I, I like a guy here like Tavis Smiley because he's just coming out and saying, fuck you, you know, I didn't do this, and I'm going to sue who I got to sue, and I'm going to say what I got to say, and uh, the hell with the rest of you. And I think you're going to see more of this happening because as this goes on, the mistakes start being made. And what gets me is that PBS, of all organizations, okay, would get rid of him based on innuendo, based on unsubstantiated facts, and then not presenting him with the facts first so he could try to reply to them. None of that happened. So next time these little weasels knock on your door or at your television door and say, hey, we're holding a pledge break. Don't give them a fucking cent. Send them straight to hell because they didn't give this guy due process. Is he guilty? Is he not guilty? I don't know. I don't care. But you, PBS, you didn't take the time to find out. Fuck you. Anyway, time to go to the phones. Let me turn them on here. Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, it gets me so fucking irritated. I'm sorry. I almost blew a gasket. And, and you know, gaskets are pretty hard to find. Anyway, uh, our, uh, our, our telephone number, folks, if you want to give us a call, we don't have a telephone. We do have a telephone number, actually. It's on at gabnet.net. Uh, let me see here for a moment. Let me just... Uh, where are we? Um... Let me see here. I've got to find gabnet.net. I'm having a hard time doing simple tasks the last day or so. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. We have a phone number, 347-352-0079, but we don't like you to use that particularly. Uh, we'd rather you use Skype because then we can see you, and then you can also be seen on, uh, on, the, on the video broadcast. It's going out over Facebook Live. So uh, I'm just uh, telling you now, you know, uh, let's uh, let's give us a call and we'll start talking. But those are and if you don't know how to use Skype or anything like that, just go to gabnet.net on the right hand side of the page. A whole tutorial, very simple on how to do it, including a little button you can press and it'll automatically dial us. Okay, so that you can get on. So just uh, just give that a try. But anyway, so this is the point in the program where we sit here and we wait for people. By the way, did you notice what I did with the Gabnet logo? Here, hold on a second. Let me just put that on there. Hey, isn't that festive? That's for the holidays. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm Jewish. Why did I do that? I have no idea. I should have put a menorah up there, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. 
but I didn't, so fuck all y'all. Anyway, here comes Phil Meyer. Phil Meyer wasn't here last night because Phil Meyer was busy, busy, busy. He had things to do. He, you know, hi, Phil. Hey, you sound really slow uh, tonight. Yeah, I, much slower than the other uh, podcasts I've been listening to. What do you mean, slower? Well, uh, maybe that net neutrality. Yeah, yeah. oh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not a pretty thing. I mean, they, uh, you know, I, I was watching it today on TV, and they were, they were talking about how, oh, well, you know, the defenders of it. Uh, oh, well, you know, we were this way. It was this way before, and everything was fine. No, well, you know, but that was then, and this is now. We're living in a whole different climate. Well, you see, I think you're using uh, old technology think that you know how I cut the cord and yeah. I've been using the Roku and I get Hulu and Netflix and all of these things over my unlimited uh, cable connection. That's right. Now, That's right. the days of uh, having Xfinity or AT&T or Fios TV may be limited. And that uh, there may be other ways of providing that content well, that well, isn't but, going but, to be slowed down. Well, that, but that isn't the point. The point is that right now, the, the major suppliers of Internet on-ramps are you the cable the companies. companies. There was a time when the cable companies weren't supplying that, by the way. You had to go get yourself an Internet service provider. I had right. one. Uh, I had several of them over the years, and none of them had to do with uh, AT&T or anybody else. You know. Yeah, I remember my first one that I had was value.net. Yeah, right. No longer right. in business. Right, and they did an on-ramp to the Internet for you. Right. You know, uh, but now it's basically through cable companies. Why? It was the simplest thing for people to get because they have cable installed in their house, and the next thing you know, they've got Internet, okay? Right. Well, you know, it was simple also just to have the buggy whip when you had the buggy. In fact, I remember when cable modems first came out, when they first came out with the cable companies with Internet service. Mm -hmm. um uh people said well this is bu this, this is bullshit don't do it you know it's going to be horrible and it was it was horrible in the beginning yeah. but they got their act together and now of course we got something like fios which is fiber and it's so so quick it's ridiculous but if i can suck up all this bandwidth but then i won't get serviced by it you know i i would imagine fios probably would be the last one to to ramp you down because what they're paying you uh, what they're giving you um, is a service that they say is super fast. So they don't want to go against that. I just make one more point. Uh, you had said in your monologue that uh, you only had one cable company and uh, that was Time Warner or whatever it is now. Well, not and, Spectrum, uh, Spectrum. And then we have Fios, but Fios isn't a cable. No, Fios, it, Fios I, isn't really a cable company. I understand, but you're pay it's still providing the same content and you're paying a third less than you were with the antiquated... Cable. cable yeah you so, know uh you know that it just goes to you you challenged it and you said phil you know you say competition uh doesn't uh doesn't lower prices there's an example well i mean no but what competition it isn't that it lowered prices fios has always been been pretty low by comparison to the cable company but, and the reason they've been pretty low is because i think the delivery system is different and it's it uh, you know I, yeah, they can they can give it for a lower price. Yes, built, for now, for now. They, but the time they built a better mouse no, trap. no, no. But the time is going to come, Phil, when they got this net neutrality thing going. All of them are just going to go fuck the public. We can charge them whatever they want. They want to see their TV. You know, they want to see their shows. They want to see their Netflix. Yes, Rob, you look like you were ready to say something. It's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to pay more, and, uh, and 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 you're going to have a lot of. What's going on with cable right now, right? You've got all these right to the, where you where you have uh, channels getting thrown off because they don't want to pay up front. They don't want to pay. So so uh, AT and T, who has their own services now, and they've got their own internet, and they've and they've got everything. They could try to overcharge Netflix to keep them down. 
I mean, they they wanted to buy that's didn't the that, system didn't AT and T? No, are they trying uh, to buy you have too much faith in business? Yeah, Minders, but the, too much faith in business to do the right thing. But it's I don't, not. That's why it's because of business that computers do not talk to each other easily. It's because of business that that happens. Yeah. How can computer? There's only two basic systems out there. Uh, you know, there's there's some small ones like Linux and so forth, but there's only two yeah, basic but, systems. But, but, but apples don't, don't apples do not play what, well with 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 PCs. About, wait a minute. Let, let me let me let me because this is what I do for a living. Let me. You want to talk about this? That's yeah. exactly what you're doing, Phil. Oh. Because it's not just about Windows mm-hmm. and and a different operating system. It's about how the different companies in the kind of work that I do, where this won't talk to that, and this company doesn't work with that company, because it's all about business. So you this- want it to be a commodity. You don't want business to stand on the products and innovations that they create. You just want a commodity that I is, want it to uh, be like the I want it to be like the electric company. Yes. Well, hey, if Where I the, make a better and, and and by the way, let me let me say this. Uh, there's a thing uh, that they they failed to mention, and they don't seem to have done anything about it. But the thing was that in the past, we, we consider these things like these internet companies, like these cable companies, as common carriers. And common carrier status means that they can't be sued for anything that's broadcast on their system. Well, I got news for you. Does this do, this does away with their common carrier status. And they could get sued for all kinds of shit. Well, that's kind of okay. Uh, Wait, you know, it's kind of okay. Look, all all I'm saying is, and and it's exactly what Rob said. You know, you, you're going to see in the beginning everybody's going to play nice, right? They're all they're all saying, well, we're not planning on raising our rates and blah blah blah. <laughs> but as soon as they see that they can, they will. Because Phil, you refuse to admit companies, corporations are greedy. The only Look, basis, the only, the only. The they collateral they deal with is greed. Okay, but their greed is they want you as a subscriber. Are they going to attract no, you? They as want a me as a subscriber for as much as they can get out of me. You can answer your own questions. You can answer your own questions with with uh, with with uh, different cable systems. What they're going to say eventually is, well, we would love to have them, but they're too expensive. Or we, you know what I'm saying? It's it, it, you can make that same argument where a cable system send, sends uh, it can't reach an agreement with CBS, and all the CBS channels are gone. And they say, well, we nobody's going to take blame for it. No well, one's no, going to take blame. Simple. Uh, Rob, uh, all you have to do is have a tier, multi-tier service. Oh, there you the go. Guy who wants CBS pays for that tier. That's so that it. means that means if you want to enjoy, if you want to be able to stream a service in your house, you're going to have to pay above and beyond because X company doesn't like Netflix. And, uh, well, no. If you know, if you want, if you want, no. If you want Netflix, they're going to use this excuse. Well, it takes more bandwidth. Yeah, and, it's not a and, beauty and, contest. Though. And they have the ability now, they'll have the ability if this ever, it's going to be challenged in court. It's going to take a long time for this to change. But, and hopefully the Republicans will be long gone once they pass their Vakakta tax bill mm-hmm. and it backfires on them the way Obamacare backfired on the Democrats. The Democrats will be back Can in power. Can something, Rob? What? Is that a suppository? No, this is a, <laughs> this is a screwdriver. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, what I was saying is that y- you're going to have business pitted against business. And you won't have business pitted not, against business. Not the way it is right now, you don't. They can't, AT&T can't stop Netflix. Well, it, it, it's not, it, 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 yeah. It, Netflix. But I don't have to use AT&T. Like I said. Well, who can you use? Who can, who, can, who can you use? I have a choice. Here. I have a Roku. Later. No, and, no, and, wait, and a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, but who's your, who's your cable connected to? Comcast. Okay, okay. So, okay. Comcast. so you it's need Comcast, Comcast don't you? NBC. They're the worst. They own NBC, they have their own content. They if do. they decide to do a streaming service and they want to make their streaming service big, what do they do? 
They charge more to Netflix. They charge more to Netflix if you want to stream it. But we'll give you Comcast streaming, which is going to be shit for free. Well, that's my choice, isn't it? That's not your choice. That is now out of no, your choice. No, you don't have a choice because all you got is fucking Comcast. Yeah, yeah but I... I Comcast is going to screw you over every time. Oh, I, I, I am able to buy uh, Netflix directly. So, you know, I'm not... Uh, what do you stream it on? Uh, yeah, but I stream it on my Roku. No, no, no. What internet service are you going to stream it on? Well, currently I'm using Comcast. Okay, so if Comcast... If Comcast doesn't is going to start charging Netflix uh, more, and they start charging you more if you want to stream that kind of content, well, that, they have a right to do that. No, that's, they don't. That's their pipe. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't that, have the right they, to throttle it. it. it Stop. They, they don't have the right to throttle it. You know, the internet is open and free. Nobody owns the internet. They hadn't. Uh, the, 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 owns the government internet. owns it. Actually. No, the, uh, the the internet. The internet is it, it. It used to be a government thing. I think it's gone beyond that now. Long time ago. Yeah. You know. But uh, but you're, you're setting up another nightmare that we had with the with content providers and cable providers. Cable providers used to be just cable providers. Then they became content providers. So Comcast owns all this content. And AT&T yes. is yeah. scooping up all of this content. And what do you think that causes? That causes me against Comcast. It doesn't cause, yes, it does to some degree, but it also causes this because I'm going to raise you and I'm going to raise you and I don't want you on my system. Oh, you could be on my system, but you're going to have to pay X amount. So what winds up happening? Well, we're sorry. We can't. It's pretty that way with cable. Get to, I know it's a mess. But it's already that way and it has always been that way. If you want lifetime, but your, if your cable company is 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 paying four dollars per subscriber to Lifetime? You're not getting the argument. It isn't like that now. Why should that change? It, what do you mean it isn't like that? You it's mean Lifetime's like not getting four bucks no, from the cable on provider? The internet. It is not like that right now. Why should that change? It's going to be a losing proposition for you and everybody else. Yeah. Well, uh, what the FCC is saying is it allows. Infrastructure improvement. How bullshit. <laughs> Bull fucking shit. Look, again, you know, Phil, Phil, I'm going to say to you, you can't, you know, you're, you're saying, oh, well, you know, all these guys are going to play the game this way. Or they're going to play the game that way. To begin with, they're going to be talking to each other. And they're going to be saying, that's, that's, how do we watch out for our own best interests? Now, Netflix doesn't own cable companies. OK. Right. And so they're going to then say, well, uh, uh, you know, uni uh, uh, Comcast, which owns Universal, says, well, we're just going to start our own uh, channel and uh, fuck uh, Netflix. We're not going to let them on our systems. And here's another scenario. All right. So don't don't you know, a Netflix have pretty deep pockets right now so they could afford some extra money. But if you want to start a new service, good luck with that. Do you, do you know? Do you know why? Why Disney? Why Disney is paying so much money for Fox? Oh, they can't expand that. They want the content, huh? They, they want, want the content. content. Why do they want the content? So they can be more competitive with what? All oh, new oh, services oh, that their competitors can't. Oh, oh, no, but wait a minute. More competitive where? Uh, to the consumer. To to the consumer? No. Right. Where are they going to be more competitive? Well, they, they're going to be more competitive because contract. starting next year they're going to have their own they're going to have their own channel, okay? Their own Netflix like channel. So they're going to they're going to compete against uh, Netflix, and of course they're not going to sell them any of the material they once were selling them. Uh, and now look at somebody like Comcast saying, well, you know, we own Universal and all these Universal properties, and we own all those Universal films, and we own all the TV shows from NBC for years. Uh, let's put on our own Comcast channel. And by the way, let's not let Netflix on because they'll compete with the Comcast channel. Well, no, they won't compete. They won't let them on. They'll just raise the price. If they'll you want their content and uh, and it's not on Netflix, then you'll want it from uh, uh, the... Uh, I mean, to show you the Netflix uh, 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 effect, 
Uh, it is said, it was said in one of the articles that I read today, that the reason that Walt Disney felt it was worth $52 billion, because a lot of people said it wasn't worth $52 billion, the deal. And by the way, they have to pay 2.5 if the Justice Department doesn't approve it. They got to give Rupert Murdoch $2.5 billion, even if it falls through. But the reason why they did it, they said, was because of Netflix and the effectiveness and the uh, the Netflix is uh, and the effectiveness of their of their channel but they've done it too late because Netflix is now in the business of creating their own material and uh, they're way out front with that yes patrick so why complicate something that that the why complicate it more than it already is i mean right now you can get Netflix, you can get Hulu, you can get all of those, yeah. and they all run at the same speed. Mm -hmm. And they all, you get them all at the same level. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which one it is. It doesn't matter if you want one or you want all of them. Uh, you can have them all compete against each other, but they're all going to be at the same rate of speed. You, you don't have to worry about your Netflix skipping or your Hulu going out or... You know, now with Disney, if you get Disney, uh, that one happened to be the best one. Why make it more complicated? Well, also, everybody's running out and buying these 4K television sets, and they want to get these these services in 4K. They won't be able to serve them with 4K if they're throttled down. Right. I mean, to me, it's the KISS theory. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, the, I mean... The, the internet really, should be the, well, the plumbing, and that's it. You don't... You don't uh, you don't commoditize the problem. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm all for, I, I'm a capitalist all the way, but there are just some things that don't make sense to complicate. And this is one of them. I mean, if I want Hulu and I want Netflix and I want Disney, I would be one of them that would be subscribing to Disney because I happen to like Disney programming well, movies the, things like well, that well they also will own all the star wars pictures by the way did i mention that I, that i i've got them the way that i want them which is the original release on dvd so yeah. I'm, I'm, but I'm using that as an example they've also got all the marvel stuff they've got every 20th century fox ever made back to the silent era you know i mean and plus they have fx they're buying in that deal you know, which is producing a lot of very popular programs right now. So That's I mean, right. they and they're going to put they're going to dump that all into their into their That's channel. Interesting. That's interesting when you think about it because Disney don't they have that squeaky clean image, and so now they're going to have these programs that are not so squeaky clean. Well, I, the, that squeaky clean image once existed. Uh, uh, the, in fact, the first film that ever went against the Disney code, as it were, was uh, what was the one about the mermaid? Uh, Splash. Yeah, Splash. Uh, and what oh, they did is they created their own new movie company to release yeah, that under, so it wasn't un, uh, under the Disney banner. I thought that was D DreamWorks. No, that that was Spielberg. It was uh, Touchstone. Touchstone. That's yeah, right. Touchstone. So. And and so the, nobody could ever say, oh well, this is a Disney film. No, it wasn't Disney film because it was a little, little Satan. It wasn't much sex in it, but there was enough that, you know. So, I Let's mean. Say, Phil, you're wrong on this. Sorry. You could, you could, there will be a lot of people who will make money on it, and you won't be one of them. It'll cost you money. Oh, I would, buy, I would, buy, I would buy stock in a cable company today since this thing if, passed. If that's good for, with you, then hey. But the internet was meant to be an open and free thing. It wasn't. It wasn't Phil, I, I disagree with you on that, Rob. It wasn't meant to be. It became, okay, by attrition and by the way it was used and by the way it was parceled out. It became uh, this uh, electronic Hyde Park, if you will. You know, the internet was never meant to monetize. So that's what I mean by it. it uh, well, was it, it, in, in the, the beginning, it, it never was meant to monetize it. It, it. it was a community of systems brought together, more bridges being brought together. There was never any talk about this is going to someday, uh, you know, it, this is this this amazing bringing together of the world with this network.
The reason why they the re, there's a main reason why they're getting rid of net neutrality, and we failed to mention that. And it's just that it's part of the Trump organization's, uh, and I'd like to call their administration the Trump organization. Uh, the, the Trump organization's desire to do away with everything that Obama had anything to do with. And net neutrality was under his watch. Oh, Obama right. put in a lot of regulations. Net net neutrality was just more regulation. No, no, no. It was not a regulation, Phil. Protection. It was a deregulation. Well, what? Uh, it what was it, a deregulation. Don't you? Aren't you for deregulation? Aren't regulations you, are rules. No, aren't you for deregulation? Yes. Yeah. Well, this was deregulation. They were saying that there are no rules except that you got to carry everybody. That's it. Boom, boom. One page, one sentence. What uh, the FCC is saying is that they put in a whole bunch what of the rules. The FCC that is saying is we're sucking Trump's dick, is what the, the FCC, FCC is saying. He's on someone's payroll at this you point. Know, is it yet again the government where, when the government can't understand how to, like, how to embrace like the internet? It wasn't their technology. They had nothing pretty much to do with it, the innovation of it. It was so like, what do they do? They come around, they shake it up, and they want to fuck everything up. Well, you know, you've got to realize, and I include Bush in this, that we have probably the most unmodern president we've ever had. Uh, this guy is not up on anything. The only thing he knows is that, gee, Twitter has 180 characters. That's about all he knows about technology. Did they go up? She, yeah, Bush. yeah, it went up. Oh. Lucky us, we can have him say more than he's been saying, you know. Is it 180 now? Why would they even have to touch it? I don't even understand why you even touch it. Just leave everything alone. It's been going fine. He's everything. He's, he's touching everything. Like Amazon, all these companies you know, are doing great. I mean, what, 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 what innovation has been stopped because of net neutrality? I yeah. don't see anything that's stopped. It seems to be going fine. You know? Well, uh, time will tell. Uh, Jeff, you got <clears throat> any thoughts on this? You know, and in three yeah. years... Hey, I asked Jeff if he through. has any thoughts on this. I know that uh, on the medical end of things, you can get all information is pretty much open global uh, information. And, and that's the way it should be. And I, I always look at it that this stuff is like having electricity we all get electricity do not you don't get more than i do yeah okay trump doesn't get more electricity right i hate to tell you even as the trump has to pay electricity at the same rate that we do yeah. that's that's the nature of that kind of a system and I think the internet is the same kind Con of. Ed, Con Ed doesn't uh, go to a big company like IBM, who might have a, a offices in a big office building in New York, and say, "Well, you got to pay more for electricity than the next guy." No, the I, price is the they, same they for everybody. Less. What they probably pay, they pay less because they use more. Uh, they they get a volume discount. Yeah, Do, probably. Do they really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. These big companies don't pay as much as a guy uh, with a two bedroom condo. I did. Uh, I, I I went online today. Per unit. I went online today and uh, went to the tax calculator for this new tax plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be 0.4 percent boost. How much? 1.4 percent. Don't spend it all in one place. I know. There you go. At least you're coming on the plus side. I'm that's not bad, even though I think it's. Well, I mean, I you know, I'm uh, my my feeling is I I checked with my business manager and I said, how's it going to affect me? And he said, oh, it's going to affect you good. He says you're gonna you're gonna pay you're going to pay less in taxes every year and you're going to get more money back. Oh. He, but I said that's that sounds good for me, but is it good for everybody? And he yeah, said, no, doubling. no, it's not good for everybody. In fact, it's very <clears throat> bad for a lot of people, and it's not rich people. It's poor people. And he said, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not good. And I said, then I'm against it. I don't care if I'm going to get money back. I, I'm not going to be that selfish. Do you feel that way, Rob? I mean, you saw that you're going to get money back, but the, it, 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 the selfish part of you, did that prevail? And you went, well, then fuck it, I want this? No, no I think this is a horrible thing. Yeah. yeah. This uh, Jeff. I, I look at it like I got, I got three kids. Okay, they all have uh, grandkids and, and things like that. 
they're not they're not going to be doing as well as you and Alex on, on these systems. Uh, a couple of them are going to be losing a lot. Most people. And they're at the bottom end. Who knows what's going to happen to Phil? We have no idea. He may actually be losing money on this deal. Yeah, probably. What, what happens is most people uh, today aren't making any more uh, with adjusted for inflation than they were in 1970. You know, uh, we we are for years we have been uh, there's been less money uh, as far as income. Things cost more. Uh, your dollar buys a hell of a lot less than it did in 1970. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's because it, it, government is out of control. Is that for you, Phil? But it's, it's, it's in ways. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you think you got. Less money than you, than you made this year and the year before than you did ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago, I was I, I couldn't print it fast enough. You got one of those little, those little fake money things. Two thousand five, two thousand five. It was like it was it, it was flowing like water. Who was president? Uh, then two thousand eight, it, it stopped. Oh, because Obama was in office. Uh, no, he wasn't the, 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 because of regulations? The end of uh, Bush. But oh, it, it stopped. It was it was like somebody turned the faucet off. Okay. Was that like when there was a... Uh, well, that's because digital carpeting came in and you weren't ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, too. Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, we, uh, that impression that, uh, that we've experienced yeah. in California, it, maybe in some sectors, has gotten better. But I can tell you, in the home uh, remodeling market, it has not gotten better. Really? No, not at all. Yeah. Phil, was your business booming more 20 years ago then? or? Uh, yeah, uh, 15 years ago, 10, 10 years ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, when, well, you know, when, uh, when everything was rock and rolling, people were buying homes, they were getting credit. Uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, towards about, uh, I can tell you, it was like April... Uh, 2005. I'll give, I'll, give, I'll give you a good example of deregulation. Uh, and, and Rob knows this one full well. The reg deregulation of, of broadcasting didn't improve it. It made it worse. <laughs> made it way worse. Sure. There, there, you never heard of a company in broadcasting going bankrupt. There are two right. of them on the edge of it every minute th these days, Cumulus and iHeartRadio. You never <laughs> heard of that because under, re under regulations, you right. had to prove you had the financial wherewithal to run a, a broadcasting outfit, and you weren't allowed to buy 1,000 of them. You were only allowed to buy uh, seven, in the, uh, seven in the country of an AM, FM, and a TV. So you could own 21 stations. And not only that, you, 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 didn't, it, you didn't have the ability to have that much of the media landscape that you can spew bullshit out of. You couldn't do what Sinclair is doing today. Yeah. Forget about the fact that they bankrupted. These companies got so greedy, they overpaid for every property they can get their hands on. Once they got them, they didn't know what to do with them. And now you got companies who are trying to start their own you know, they're trying to be Fox News on on broadcast television like Sinclair. I think, and it's wrong. I think Cumulus is the second largest broadcasting outfit in the country. If not, it's the third. Uh, and it is literally, I think, in bankruptcy protection right now. That's how bad these things have gotten. So there's your deregulation in broadcasting, Phil. Also, the product got worse. Let's hear from Bob. Yes, Bob. It's like uh, the radio stations around here in Whitehall. Uh, I'm hearing some guy named Elvis who's on up teen dozen stations. There's no local DJs, no local music scenes being covered. Elvis Duran, I think is his name. It's yeah, right. and it's pure crap. Yeah, it's unlistenable. Yeah, well, uh, they said about our music uh, when we were kids. Phil, Phil, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking <laughs> about is that deregulation has brought about the fact that you've got a guy in New York playing to maybe it's not just a handful of stations. It could be a lot more than that. 
and that the local uh, area is not being served. You know, I mean, that was the great thing about radio. It, it was a local service that supplied you with information or told you, hey, it's raining out there like a bitch. The guy mm -hmm. in New York can't say that now. When you drove into Chicago, you heard Chicago blues and stuff on the radio. When you drove into Memphis, you heard Memphis music scene. Yeah. Driving to Detroit, you hear Detroit. Driving to New York, you heard New York. Yeah. Now you just hear Pablum. You just hear what you, what you hear. You, uh, it, it's every sure. part of the country is being inundated with the same signal. It's really same. 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 Yeah, but, but, uh, but no, but I'm going back. I want to go back to the basic premise. So you're saying radio got better because of deregulation, Phil? Uh, things changed. Maybe radio was was a dinosaur, and uh, it wasn't a and, dinosaur until these laws made it so. Uh, I don't know. Did it, it become it, a dinosaur it, it, because? Because it, it coincided with uh, its eventual death. I mean, you rich, know, rich. It made radio irrelevant to certain neighborhoods and areas because it wasn't giving the people what they needed. I mean, you, when, you, I, you, when I was growing up as a kid, uh, my neighbor owned a radio station in Westchester called WLNA. WLNA, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I didn't listen much to its format. It was for older people. But, uh, you know, the disc jockey got paid $100 a week uh, and had to empty the garbage. I remember that was the... Yeah, uh, that was the, that's what you have to do in those small stations. I used to have to do the same thing. Five, huh? This was in 1965. Yeah, and now you call that a local station, but I bet if you look at it today, it's being run by some one of these state groups that owns. The guy is probably dead now. That owns mm -hmm. tons of stations, and they're just taking a signal from somewhere else. And now the FCC has said you don't even have to have an office. Where your uh, where where these stations are, they're just going to be feeding these transmitters from from New York City, or from they may find a cheaper place in New York City to do it from. They may do it from Boise, Idaho, and you know send the signal out to all their radio stations. One size fits all, and that's I get back to you. You haven't answered the question yet. Well, do you think the regulation of radio made it better? Uh, no. Okay, that's the answer. But I don't, I don't no, no, know. no, no buts. Wait, That's the answer. No, 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 no. You can't cut me off again. I don't. Oh, know yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm the host of the show. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I, I don't know that deregulation killed radio. It might have been that radio had died, and deregulation was uh, was another you know knife. No, in the I didn't see it go. I didn't see. I didn't see it go sour till deregulation. Till Clinton signed in deregulation. Well, I think it went sour when the, the good guys got taken off of uh, well, WMCA. Well, no, but it was resuscitated when Alex Bennett was on Live 105 in San Francisco. Okay, so. All right. Yeah, whatever. I used to be a big shot. You get it? Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, you remember that friend, uh, that guy I know, ha Hal Plotkin? Hal who? Um, yeah, Hal, he, he's, he was the head of, or is a creator of Creative Commons, which is... Uh, instead of you know, instead of publishing things uh, and having copyright, it's a open it's an open right for people to use uh, uh, yeah. books and, well, and, uh, and I, I, for instance, when I put stuff up on YouTube, so I use Creative Commons so everybody right. can use it. Yeah. Well, uh, Hal and Lawrence Lessig started that. Uh -huh. So, and, what, uh, so what's the point it, you're trying to make? It's kind of like the internet. What's the of, point you're trying to make? Just you're trying to prove you know somebody? What, 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 what oh, you uh, well, you met him. Uh, you talked to him. Uh, you interviewed him. I did? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got him on. You interviewed him. Uh, it was a very good interview. What was the discussion on? Uh, well, it turns out he was also a Bay Area radio uh, guy. Uh, that's kind of where your interview went. But uh, uh, See, uh, that shows you how far gone I am. I can't remember it. But really? then again, I don't remember you, so. Uh. <laughs> I swear, I'll, I'm going to ask my ex-wife for some of my old pictures so I can show you, you know. <laughs> She's got them all. Yeah. I mean, I remember there was some guy who kept following me wherever I wanted to do who wanted to give me a rim job, but that wasn't you, was it? No, it wasn't me. No, that, that was Brian. <laughs> I see. Okay. I just want to, I just want to make sure. to defend himself. Because I, I like to know who's giving me a rim job, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wonder if that woman I used to know who gave me rim jobs would probably call in and say that I molested her or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's she, she did it voluntarily. Well, you know, that's kind of it's, it's making me feel uncomfortable. Am I making, you know, uh, <laughs> you know maybe, maybe I ought to call Gab that and complain. Well, you know, I did this whole little thing about, about Tavis Smiley. Did any of you yeah, hear I, that? And the thing yeah. he wrote and how, you know, as a kid, I grew up with the McCarthy era and it scared the shit out of me. I mean, it, uh, mm -hmm. I was appalled by it. And now I find that this Me Too movement is slowly turning into another McCarthy era in which people are being let go from jobs without any explanation, without any hearing, without anybody sitting down. And, you know, like Tavis Smiley said, I had to finally get my lawyers to threaten to sue for them to sit down with me. And then they didn't tell me anything. And I had to read about it in variety. I didn't even know what was going on. Now, when he has to say that... There, that's getting, you know, that's getting scary. But there is a big difference between McCarthyism and what happened there and this. And that is that that was that was just a paranoid group or, you know, a senator who who called all these people out. And yes, the rest of it is the same. There was no trial. There was nothing. But this is a matter of a pendulum that has swung one way for so yes, long. But but, you know, the question is and I'm, I'm you know, it, are some of these things that they're saying about these people, you go, okay, so he pinched you in the ass. Now, that's not nice, and that's not right, and that's, uh, what could I call it? That's, that's de classe. It's just not the right thing to do. But do you make somebody lose a job because he pinched somebody in the ass once? You know, or do you just say, uh, you know, uh, how, how long ago was that? Well, it was 30 years ago. How old were you? I was 24. Well, you know... We all do stupid things when we're 24. But, Absolutely. But you're making them pay for it today, the same way during the communist era they were making people care, uh, pay for their, their, their vicariousness politically 30 years earlier when they joined the Communist Party because there was a, there was a, a, a depression going on. Sure about that state representative from Kentucky that committed suicide, I think either this morning or yesterday, because he yeah. was accused by a 17-year-old, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, of, uh, of uh, sexual misconduct. I didn't hear about that, but I'm not surprised that somebody hasn't yeah. done that. I mean, what I'm saying, Rob, is there is a similarity at this point. There wasn't a similarity with Weinstein and with the first couple of them, but now it becomes, I mean, a thing like I read... I read this thing by Tavis Smiley, and I said, Jesus Christ, you know, I mean, it's that these companies, without even asking you, drop you, ruin your entire career and everything you've done based on some some what some people came in and, and told you some things through the door. And these are all anonymous, by the way. That's the other part about it that makes it wrong. Most of the reporting, most of what's coming out has been very well vetted by these organizations these are not this is not coming from fox news this is coming from the washington post this is coming from places that actually do journalism well it, they can do all the journalism they want but it's also coming from anonymous sources now i understand anonymous sources where rape is concerned okay uh because you want to keep the person anonymous uh, be, uh but at least the 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 uh, person who's being accused of rape does know who the person is it's just that publicly their names aren't listed in these cases people are just anonymous even the accused doesn't know who they are so that he can accurately reply to the uh, to the to the accusations so i mean is that right yes patrick i know this isn't quite a good analogy but it's it's kind of like what Phil was just saying with the guy that he knows, and he asked if you knew him. The thing is, you may not recall the person, but he gave you a name. So, you know, it, it, that the people are not getting that, that ability to even say, I don't remember that person. So that's why I think it is more like a witch hunt or, like you say, the McCarthy or stuff. Because, like Travis Smiley, I heard I just heard about that today, that he he, he had no idea who the hell these people are. Well, he doesn't have any idea because they're all anonymous. Exactly, and 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 it's like, 
how are you supposed to defend yourself against something that that invisible see again you know? if if i was still in the public eye which thank god i guess i'm not at this point that's maybe a blessing uh, uh there probably maybe would be a woman that would come forward with some claim about me that would be very untrue but if i didn't know who she was i couldn't reply to it you know i couldn't say no i i either i never heard of the person or uh, i never went out with her oh well i remember it differently she came on to me or whatever but i don't have that right because she's anonymous and so I have to say, well, you know, I have done a lot of strange things in my life. I don't think I've ever done anything untoward a woman or done anything to make a woman feel uncomfortable. But, uh, and, and I know and there are a couple of women that I know that were so crazy, so nuts, that some of them might come forward at this point just because they're crazy. I thought you had a, uh, when you're accused, uh, you have the right to face your accuser in this country. Well, but this isn't, that's not even what's happening. Tavis Smiley is losing his show without a trial, without, any, you know, he may turn around and sue the shit out of PBS and I hope he gets all my, mm -hmm. all my, all my donation money, uh, you know, uh, because I think I, from, if everything he says is true, I think he's got a great case. All right. Yes, Patrick. And there is a, there's a little bit of a difference between <clears throat> what goes on in Washington or in the state houses mm -hmm. and What's going on with the public eye with yeah. broadcasters is that the voters have to make a decision on the people that they've elected. Yeah. And like Al Franken or Roy Moore, something like that. Yeah. So they, so the the whether or not they're guilty, that's something the people have to make a decision of by voting the other ones are in private business you know or like public broadcasting there should be more of a uh, uh some sort of a setup where you do face your future where you are able to defend yourself before you lose your fucking job okay maybe you get suspended because there's good uh good amount of evidence or credible evidence but you don't lose your job. I mean, need pe a lot of people now don't ever be able to work again because of an accusation. Yes, uh, Patrick. I mean, Patrick. I mean, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, a lot of these people that we're talking about have contracts. It's, it's not that employees. They have contracts, which means that they have business relationships between the people that we see them on TV every day. Now, if CBS throws him out and he does it with without good justification, he's got enough money that, that is, he can hire his attorney and sue him and, and, and win that and get all the money back and, I, and more. I, I would say in this case, if Tavis Smiley were to threaten suit against uh, PBS at this point, mm -hmm. I would say they would probably settle. I don't think they've got much of a case. I mean, to say that, well, we let him go because he has a thing, a morals thing in his contract. Well, but you didn't prove that he was immoral. Do you remember <clears throat> what it takes? It's how much justice can you afford? Maybe oh, Travis yeah. Smiley hasn't got an unlimited... Oh, uh, I think he does. he's quite wealthy. He's quite wealthy. And, and Matt Lauer's quite wealthy, and he's going to be wealthier because it's rumored he's going to get $30 million from NBC for them dumping him. How much? But $30 million. <laughs> Yeah. This is not bad for staying home. Not, yeah. yeah. Now, you know, I mean, but I just think that at this point, all these things are unsubstantiated. Yes, we want to believe the woman. Women have not been believed for the longest time, but I think we're getting the wrong message out of that. They've, been, they've not been listened to. Uh, you know, you pay attention to them, and then you, you, but you, you, right now it's turned around where guys are not believed. If you say, no, I didn't, they go, but you did. It was like the thing I always told you about that happened to me with, uh, with Lori Thompson in, uh, in, at, the, at the Olympics with Coca-Cola and somebody accusing mm -hmm. me of hitting her of hitting uh, Lori, and the cops take the Coca-Cola police, 
you know, I guess they took me down to the basement armed with uh, can openers and uh, they they said, stay here. You know, we hear that you hit Lori Thompson and they treated me like I was guilty of it. And then, of course, she came in and they said, did he do anything? She he wouldn't hit. She's never even come close to anything like that with me in the life, my life or any other person that I know that he knows. Or in the United States. Huh? If you're in a law abiding country, you would have had rights. Well. No, that this wasn't this wasn't the uh, this. You don't think that people have rights in uh, in Norway? No, maybe. Well, they didn't treat you like you had well, rights. No, you no, said. I did. Did I say these were the cops? Well, they were the Coca Cola police. They were the Coca Cola police. Yeah, who are from America and should know better. And then yeah. when she came in and she said, "No, he didn't do anything," they were they started becoming apologetic. Because they knew that I, w I could sue them. You know, they were, uh, I, know, I didn't sue them because they were a sponsor, and I, I don't want to get a sponsor mad at the radio station, you know. But it, it would terrorize me, and I was not believed until the woman said that I was innocent. <laughs> I'm thinking, if, I'm glad Lori liked me because she could have thrown me to the wolves. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. But you had the tickets to get home. No, I, um, you, uh, yes, I your did. Your luggage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Patrick. Um, the other thing, it, it, just for me, and I, I, I know I'm biased this way because I don't like Al Sharpton or Gloria Allred. If ever I see anybody with Gloria Allred, I automatically assume it's bullshit. And it's the same as somebody with Al Sharpton. I automatically assume it's bullshit. Yeah, there's no credibility. Do, do you ever notice when Gloria Allred is sitting next to the person, it looks like the person is a dummy and she's the ventriloquist? Do you ever, have you ever noticed that? She's like <laughs> mouthing the words <laughs> with her. Oh, this yeah. piece of shit from Kentucky. Uh, it was his daughter's friend that he molested, 17 years old. But she, the daughter's friend is hot beyond hot. But uh, well, that doesn't it, it give anybody any. It's no excuse for molestation, no, oh, and it's okay. it, and, I, and I don't even know why you mention it. I don't know. The guy put a gun to his head and blew his brains out. So yesterday, uh, because of the accusation. But but, it, uh, but you know. But all I'm saying is, all we've got in most of these cases are accusations. Uh, today, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Russell Simmons. Uh, uh, the yeah. the deaf molester yeah. Uh, yeah. he Jam. he uh, uh, he finally came out and said a lot of these things are categorically un untrue and then he started a new hashtag uh, to go against the uh, you know me, me too uh, his was hashtag not me you know and I think maybe we should start that hashtag I mean I just all I'm saying is is that when it started out yeah. Weinstein, everybody knew this about Weinstein in Hollywood. This was a guy who criminally was doing this kind of stuff. But then all of a sudden, they then went to Kevin Spacey, who, they, you know, that was a, uh, something that happened 30 years earlier. If it happened at all, we don't know. There's no trial, yeah, right? So much yeah, came out against Well, wait a minute. Yeah, but, I mean, it, look, I, you know, but then all of a sudden we're getting down the line now, and we're getting like Tavis Smiley who says, bullshit. He's calling the bullshit alarm on this thing. And saying, you know, and, and at this point, I think it has turned from being a, um, uh, uh, an important statement being made and has been diminished by what I call the lynch mob mentality. Can uh, I ask a question? Yeah. Calling it a movement. Yeah, well, calling it a movement, I call it a mob mentality because that's what well, it really you, is. You look at somebody like, you know, good old Megyn Kelly. She's I consider what happened to Al Franken a lynch mob. Every freaking day, you know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Pat, uh, <laughs> Tony. You know, I was going to ask you. What? Like you mentioned, Kevin Spacey. Do you think it should be time, maybe, for him and his agent to say, "Listen, maybe you should speak a little bit. Maybe they should try." To well, it, you know, it, it depends. When did he get it, the interview? It, it, well, there have been some other accusations against him that are more mm -hmm. recent. Uh, yeah, on the current show. Yeah, you know, and some lawyer. It depends on your lawyer. I mean, most lawyers will tell you shut up. Mm -hmm. That's what lawyers will always tell you to do. Lawyer, and and then it's your decision as to what you want to do. I'm sure Tavis Smiley's lawyer said, "Shut up," and Tavis went, "Okay, it's my decision. I want to say something." And he said something, and it it resonated very nicely. You know, I mean, it really he really made a point. You know, like 
I, I, I'm being, I'm the aggrieved party here, you know, and I don't even know who my accusers are. They're all anonymous. I mean, what? They say if they're not anonymous, they won't come forward. Well, if they won't come forward, if they're not anonymous, if, if they are known, then apparently there's a reason. You know, because you've got the, 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 the wisdom of the crowd, as it were, on your side. So why don't you want to be known? And, and it happened 20 years ago, so who cares? You've been screwed a lot more times since then by people you did like. It's Jeff. I assume that that uh, that you had a uh, a daughter. No, that was now thirty years old. No, I don't have. I don't have any children. I know you don't. Oh, so oh. I'm, I'm oh. making an oh, okay. artificial okay. assumption. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and say you had a, a thirty year old daughter who's working in whatever in TV or something. Yeah, like that. and one of these guys hit on her, and uh, you know he. I didn't say he didn't rape her, but but he was uh, inappropriate in the office. And she said, get the hell out of the way from me. Don't do that. Yeah, right. And say it's uh, had a second time, okay? Yeah. What would you do? Oh, I'd kill him. <laughs> you know, I'd, 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 I'd kick <laughs> his teeth in. You know, when you put the plastic bag over his head, Make sure you steal it around his neck. Yeah, I mean, you know, sure, of course. But, 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 but now you're giving an absolute story, okay? Uh, I, I know who the person is. I, I believe them because it's my daughter. And she, she, her story has been consistent. It's a little different, you know, than all these things where people walk in over the transom and go, he, he, he pinched my ass when I was 13, you know? And then you go, okay, well, now do you have proof of that? And then they don't have any proof, but because they're the woman, you're supposed to believe them automatically. Well, a person's career is in jeopardy here as well. And I think men's rights are as important as women's rights in a matter like this. I don't think there, anybody should have the, the home court advantage, but it seems that's true because Tavis Smiley is having to answer critics for something that he honestly believes he never did. All right. Yes. First, Patrick, then Mike. Yeah. The other thing for me is the, time, the, 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 the distance of time from when something happened to now. And what I'm talking about is not rape, but inappropriate touching or, you know, a, a swat on the ass, something like that. You know, I, I don't categorize it in the same way as rape. You know, if somebody raped somebody 30 years ago, absolutely, they, they're ground for whatever uh, legal proceedings there are, and they should get, you know, the fourth to down to the law. Yeah. But swat somebody on the ass, um, I don't, it, you know, it, you get your hand slapped, and a little bit of embarrassment, and and you know, it it you've said it before. We're trying to equate everything to the level of rape, and it isn't. Well, uh, it yeah. Uh, 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 Mike had his hand up, and then I'll go to Kevin. Yes, Mike. You know, which if if Smiley takes this to court, and I pretty probably will. They have to prove. Am I correct? that he did this. And if they cannot prove or have witnesses to the crime, that case would be thrown out. Well, I think, I think the question would be more in a court of law in this case, did PBS do due diligence uh, to come to this determination? And if they can't prove that they had due diligence, which I don't think they can, because how can you have due diligence when you can't then look him straight in the face and say, look, this person said this, this person said that. We can't say their names, they're anonymous, but they said this, they said that. They didn't even go that far with Tavis Smiley. They just fired him. They just dumped it. They didn't fire him, they dumped the carriage of his show. Which it's he, almost like saying he, uh, he's, you know, uh, you know, things were said the wrong way, you know, said that he, he did it, and your PBS says, okay, he's fired. 
Well, I think he has every right to sue PBS and whoever else is involved in this. Yeah, well, so much for so much for me getting my tote bag this year. Uh, yes, Kevin. So, you know, I, I still got a problem with the fact that, <clears throat> okay, we talk about these things that happened 30 years ago. 30 years ago in the, what, 70s, 80s, this was, like you say, it was, it was happening. And people just accepted it as a, a swat in the butt or a pinch in the ass. There were no quote-unquote harassment laws or rules or policies or anything in place, and they evolved over that amount of time. And now people are trying to prosecute you on stuff that wasn't there then. That's like yeah. making up a law, and you had, you'd done something back 30 years ago, and now it's a law, mm -hmm. and they're going to go back 30 years and, 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 well, and you know, prosecute you for it. You know, uh, let me let me throw, right. let me let me throw this out there, and uh, and and uh, this is no excuse, by the way, because uh, I yeah, I, I, I honestly excuse. believe this kind of behavior was something that was rather is rather foreign to me because it was none of the kind of behavior I would involve myself in. I never even liked to hang around with guys who would talk dirty about women. Who were yeah, around. I'm the same way. Yeah, I, I found that it made me. I many times I would say, "Hey, don't talk about her that way." You know, that's not right. That, that's me, but yeah. but that's not uh, uh, the crowd mentality, as it were. Uh, and and the fact of the matter is that guys are expected in this society, and would anybody disagree with me on this, to be the aggressors? Yeah. Am I right? No. Yeah. And and because we're in that position. We could be accused of being aggressive, but yes, we, but, we but you know, I mean, I believe me, there were a lot of women I didn't go out with because I couldn't get up the courage to be the aggressor. I just wasn't good at being an aggressor. You know, I you had to, I, I had to do it by having a radio show. Okay, you, you know, would be the I, aggressor, right? yeah, but I was never a very good aggressor. Somebody said, you know, Alex could never seal the deal. You know. Uh, but but guys are expected in this society. I, mean, I notice you agree with me, Rob, to be the aggressor. So now Absolutely. guys who took this to heart and to maybe sometimes to an extreme are being vilified now. What, what do you think? What are you supporting? Wait, wait, I, I, I was talking to Rob. Okay, Rob. Yes, Rob. Um, I I think that um, what's happened is that the culture changed so much in the in the sixties and the seventies. Women hit the workplace. There was a blurring of traditional values of, you know, women. Here, look, listen to the Frank Sinatra song. What's yeah. that song, you know, where he talks about, you know, guys uh, will be loved. What is it, uh, you know, about the woman staying home and making sure she looks great because the guy's out there and he's, uh, you know, he'll if you're not looking good, he'll go out there and he'll find someone else. I don't remember that. That sounds like a country song. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's, no it's, baby, it's cold. Wives, it's cold. It's cold. Wives and lovers. Yeah, okay. That was uh, That was Jack Jones. Well, I have a Sinatra version version yeah. of that song. Yeah, and, it's, and also baby that song, it's almost offensive to hear today. Yeah, and I think people mm -hmm. once women got into the workplace and they're arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder with all these men, uh, you know, it, it takes a long time to to change culture, to change people's sensibilities to uh, certain things, and yeah. and I think that's a lot of it. Yeah, I, I disagree did with you see the guy. Did you read today? I can't find it. There was a guy today who made an apology. He came out and said, you know something? I didn't know that I was I was sitting there reading and watching all this stuff. And who's next and who's next? And I realized I'm one of these guys. He, uh, that, that's when, Tavis Smiley, I think, said that. Was it? We said talked that he, about, he was in a he, he talked about this date that he had with this woman. And they wound up going to bed together and they were joking around and laughing around. And she told him straight out, look, I don't want to have sex. And he kind of they were they were cuddling a bit and they were joking around. And then he started to have sex with her and she was crying. And so he rolled off and he's like, you know, he's comforting her. And he thought this was fine. Then he reads months, years later that she felt she called it a rape. 
He had no idea it was that. Yeah. So it is a very interesting story. I wish I could find I, it. I, yeah. I, I, I seem to remember the story, but I don't know who it was. Yeah, uh, it was fascinating to read. Yeah. It was a whole long thing. And then there, some of his women friends were, and he apologized. And it was the best, the best one of these. You know, some people have said some pretty cool things, some of the guys. But this guy was like really so well written and, 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 and all that. And w some of his friends, the women friends right there said, so you're the next fuck that I you know, have lost faith in now. And he said, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, I apologize. I hope someday you'll be able to forgive me. It, it's fascinating to read, but I think it all has to do with just the way we were brought up. Well, but again, again, I go back to the fact that men are expected to be the aggressors. Uh, I disagree with you. You don't have to pinch somebody on the ass. No, I, that's not being an aggressor, Phil. Huh? It, that's it, not being that's, an aggressor. Uh, Pinching a woman on the ass is improper. It is just disrespect. Okay. Okay. I, that, so what I'm saying is, you don't have to do that to let someone know you're interested, or to aggress, uh, to be more aggressive about asking somebody out. You can ask them out if they say no. You know, it's no. Well, a bit, you, no, 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 it, Phil, 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 you're within, being argument to be, uh, you're being exactly. argumentative for the sake of being argumentative. The fact is that you know, uh, there's that point in every evening with a man and a woman where they're out on a date where a guy has to make the decision: is he going to go for the kiss? Okay. Well, well, wait a minute. Will you let me you finish, finish, Phil, please? And you're going to go for the kiss, and 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 so you do. And then years later, they go, oh, "He came on to me. You know, he he made me feel uncomfortable." Well, it's about perceptions. It's about perceptions, exactly. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick. Well, I I was going to just kind of stay the same thing. Uh, it would be ridiculous if. You, and Phil's right. That I don't think that's what uh, Alan was meaning by aggressor. I think it, the, the man typically is expected to take the lead in the relationship or a potential relationship to take the first step. And then, you know, like you said, Alex, with, so you go in for the kiss, and then you're accused 30 years later of inappropriate you know, and that's what some of this stuff sounds like. You, know, it was as innocent as that, and now we're trying to equate that with rape. Okay, Bobby. Bobby Berth has his hand up. Oh, Bob. I think part of the thing too is any relationship between a a man and a woman. There are many uh, missed connections, uh, misinterpretations. Mm -hmm of what's going on between them, misreading each other. Mm -hmm. And then all that comes back up in the soup now. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody else had their hand Tony. Uh, Tony, yeah. Yeah, I have to cut it short because I have to walk Pebbles. Well, let Pebbles uh, pee on the floor. Well, she's in the crate. I got to take a little one. Let her pee in the crate. She'll learn that when she, it fills she up. She won't go in where she sleeps. Huh? She won't go where she sleeps. Well, then let her stay in her crate and see how long she can keep her legs crossed. Test that plan. Tony's going to bust it up. You got a full house, and Tony's going to bust it up just to walk the dog. Just to walk the fucking dog. He's got pebbles. He's got a dog named Coco, too. So Coco Pebbles, get it? Whoa. By the way, I saw pictures of that dog. He's ugly. Anyway. <laughs> he's he's just, he, you know, you can, you, you, I, I, listen. Everybody's got to own a mutt like that, otherwise they'll euthanize them. So you know, it's good. You, it's good you saved his life, her life. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I hope I didn't hurt his feelings because when I said that about his grandmother, he started crying. <laughs> so you really? know. I, Really? Yeah, when I was doing my radio show, he called up and he went, uh, "My my grandmother died." Or my aunt, or something—I can't remember who it was exactly. And I, and I, and I, and I said, "Well, I never liked her anyway." And uh, he started crying. So I'm very careful with Tony. He takes my sense of humor a little too seriously. You know, yeah. that was—I got that years ago from Penn Jillette, who said that whenever somebody—I—I I broke up with a girl, and I told him, I said, "I just broke up with my girlfriend," and he said, "Well, I never liked her anyway," and. Uh, I said, why do you say that, Penn? And he says, 
Well, no, I says I say that to anybody who breaks up with his girlfriend. You don't want to hear me say how wonderful she was, do you? You don't want me to say, what a fool you are to have lost her. How did you lose that? That was a great piece of ass, you know. Uh, he says, no, you want me to hear, hey, I didn't like her anyway. Never liked her. Never liked her, you know. So remember that. Oh, you got a kitty cat tonight there. Uh, That's correct. Yes. Uh, uh, and what kind of cat is that? That looks like a, just a tabby, right? Yeah, gray. Yeah. Call him Smokey. Call him Smokey. Oh, that's original. Uh, My yeah. nephew named him. So. Uh, your nephew named him. Okay. Well, it's, at least it's better than Pebbles. Okay. So. Anyway. Smokey Joe. Yeah. No. I, all like I'm saying song. is, is that the, uh, the 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 rules have changed. Uh, they probably should have changed years ago. Uh, they were my rules. I lived by all my life. But you know, the rules have changed. Same and, here, actually. Huh? Same here, even before, well, I was in high school, before, you know, I, I had an idea that I was gay. I, I lived by those rules. Yeah. The rules you live by, Al. Yeah. You lived by, Alex. But, you know, I, 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 I but because some guys didn't live by them and they felt that this was the way you had to act and this is the way you had to pursue women, uh, to hold it against them now, and to hold it against them now when they're much older and wiser, okay, um, now I hold it against both men and women. No, but then again, I'm biased against human beings. What's his name? The I the, hate the, people. Period. The the chef um, um, Mario Batali uh, said that all this happened. He says he doesn't know who the women are, but he knows he could be accused of it, and so therefore uh, he uh, um, he he will say I have done improper things in my life, you know. But uh, I was young, and I was impressionable, and I didn't know better. Okay, I'll buy that. But then, then again, I don't buy that he didn't do it when he was owning restaurants and recently. Okay, so um, I, I don't buy it because, quite frankly, the worst egregious people— see, the most egregious people in all this are, are fat and ugly. Have you noticed that? It's Weinstein. It's— uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's it, you Nothing know, uh, uh, Louis C.K. First of all, today I looked at it and I went, "Holy crap! Every one of these guys are fat and ugly." Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, my question is: Are we are we prejudiced against fat and ugly people? That's what I'm questioning here. <laughs> we're just good at being. Then I'm in deep shit. <laughs> you know. But I do have a point I'd like to make. Yeah. Uh, other, other than the fact that I'm prejudiced against all human beings, period. Well, that so that and that's what we like about you misanthropic asshole that I am. Yeah. Never the gay asshole that I am. Nevertheless, the point I want to make is uh, in an ideal world, what you could do to resolve this issue once and for all, and I'm speaking on behalf of the men, not yeah. the women, yeah. Renee or somebody can call in on, and, and opine on that end of it. Yeah. But nevertheless, on a man's side, what you could do is you just pull your pants down in your underwear, you you know, get yourself all stiff and erect, and you just say, okay, here, here's the deal. Either you sit and spin on this motherfucker, or you don't. Either way, I get my answer as to whether or not you do it or not. Yeah, well, my question is, and this is my big question is, don't apo my, well, my big piece of advice is now, don't apologize. It's not going to do you any good to apologize. Maybe for the women, you go, maybe she pulls her pants. I'll say, either you eat this or you don't, or you play with these or you don't. Otherwise, I, either way, I'll get my answer there. Yeah. <laughs> Blunt and to the point. Blunt and None to the point. None of this super secret decoder ring horse shit that we've been well, subjected to for I, generations. I, I, you know, from here on in, I don't think there is a, a, a congressman or senator who's going to allow a selfie to be taken with them. Or if there is a selfie taken, there's going to be a certain distance. These people better have long arms, okay, to take the picture. Because I, if I were a lawyer for any of these congressmen or senators, I would say, or any public figures, do not take selfies, you know, because they're going to... What? Why do you have your hands in front of you? Oh, yeah, invisible. Yeah, like this. yeah, but, yeah right. Sorry. With me, it would be more like this. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna see a, you're gonna see a oh, selfie with a famous person like this, and you go, oh, that must have been taken in 2017. Yes. You know, uh, I mean, it's just I think maybe we're going back a little too far in all of this. You know, well, I, 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 I I I think that if somebody engaged in this behavior in the last say, oh, seven eight years, uh, I think 
then then it's egregious enough to make complaint about it. When they did it before that, we have to really ask ourselves, you know, if somebody said zero tolerance, uh, and I thought about that for a second, and I'm going, there's zero tolerance where this is concerned. And I went, zero tolerance. If I told you I had zero tolerance towards all Jews, wouldn't that be a bad thing? Yeah, if I told you because I, I had no tolerance, tolerance at all. Things. Don't we don't we like to think we have tolerance and that we we also are forgiving and that if someone yeah. says I'm sorry we understand that they feel uh, 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 you know a certain what's the word I'm looking for uh, a certain amount of recanting of what they did an understanding of what they did uh, but tolerance instead they say the I you know I'm sorry I did it I'm sorry and we go well you still go to the penalty box no matter what you know. Yeah. And that then, I think, cheapens the apology. I mean, what they've done here with all of this, and I'm saying, I go back to the, to the McCarthy era, to the Red Scare era, uh, it, doesn't, it seems like almost the same thing. We want to, we, what Tra Tavis Spiley wrote is exactly the kind of thing that happened to a lot of people, say, there were some people in radio. There was a guy, I'm trying to remember, John Henry Falk, who this happened to, where this organization called Red Channels, which was a little book that came out every week that listed people who were suspected being members of the Communist Party. And it was in the desk of every broadcast executive. And if you came in looking for a job, he would uh, pull this book out and look aside to see if your name was there. And if it wasn't there, you got hired. And if it, it was there, the wait a minute, let me finish. But he had a whole, the guy who ran it owned supermarkets. And so he was had a financial hold over the industry as well. But the point was that eventually John Henry Falk sued him and got the largest libel settlement at the time. But it, 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 you know, it, it reminds me of that era when Tavis Smiley is told, oh, you don't have a show anymore. Why? Well, we can't say. You know, yeah. and it's kind of that it's kind of the new red channels, but only it's being run by women, you know, just in business. You know, we can't or or any job, you know, even as a clerk or something or as a as a, as a cashier. Well, you bet you're you've been let go. Why? We can't say. Yeah. OK, and, I'll give you a reason then. Go fuck yourself in your mother's ass. How's that for a reason? Yeah, well, well, that's a very sexist comment. We're going to have to make sure you never work hauling hearts again. You know, uh, well, at least I gave them a valid reason, or what I perceive to be a valid reason, rather than this cloak and dagger PC Nazi esque bullshit. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, as I say, when it happened, with, you know, the fact is that it, it all the worse this gets, the more of a mob mentality this becomes, the more we get to the position where uh, we are. Uh, what is all that noise? Is that is that Phil? When we get we get to this position, uh, that it it diminishes the horridness of what Harvey Weinstein did, and by the way, the Harvey Weinstein part of it diminished everything that Bill Cosby is accused of. When's the last time you heard anybody talk about Cosby? You know, it's a good, yeah. it, it's a and, gift for Cosby. It's, I'll say that much. And if what happened to uh, Weinstein or K Spacey or even uh, any of these other guys, he, he, some of the lesser guys, had happened to Woody Allen now, he'd never make another movie again. But because it happened years ago, and he also married the girl as well, uh, the woman as well, um, he, um, you know, nobody, nobody even brings that up anymore. But, but how bad is Cosby looking now, huh? Huh? At least they were asleep. Uh, yes. Uh, and they, had, they wanted to be drugged anyhow. Uh, Patrick? <laughs> not all of them. Patrick? Okay. Let's be fair. Okay, yeah. Uh, Patrick? I, I, oh, you, I had, have... you had your hand up. Oh, I, I put my coffee cup down. Oh, I see. Well, it, it, you know, for me, I, when I see a person's hand up, it's like a dog seeing a bone. You know, so... So where does that leave us? With ten minutes to go, and we've exhausted everything. Uh, no. Well, what did you guys say about uh, is, the next? Wait, wait, wait a minute, Rob. Did you have something? 
Yeah. Uh, has, have you guys at all lately touched on all of the the fervor that uh, Fox News is 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 trying to stir up for the Mueller investigation? Oh, that. Uh, yeah. In what respect? Well, Donald just Jr. in general. I mean, they, 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 did you watch any of those hearings? I saw a little bit of the hearings, and they mentioned that Fox had some uh, emails or some texts or something between one person and another. But to Mueller's uh, uh, credit, he got rid of this guy as soon as he found out about these these. Hey, and let's texts. face it, people are human. Everybody has an opinion. Especially today, I don't care who you are, if you're a police officer, if you're an FBI agent. The idea is you, 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 you do your job. And then if they find out that you're uh, like they did with these guys, you take the, the necessary uh, you know, actions. Mueller is dangerous. And you know he's dangerous because they're trying to shoot him in the foot. Exactly. Okay? So you know he's dangerous. You know he's on to something. Yes, the louder Patrick. they scream, the more effective yeah. he is. Yeah, Patrick. Um, I think part of the issue with the you know, um, text messages is the fact that they live forever, and that they were they were text messages versus thirty years ago. It would have been you and I talking in the. Uh, Know, at the water cooler it's saying that versus something that lives forever. I mean, even email, you know, and that was one of the things that, you know, my friends and I at work, my work friend, we never, if there was somebody that we were having an issue with, it was never on any sort of written thing. It was talked about so that, you know, there was no record of it. And, and I think that's the problem is it was texting. And yes, to Mueller's credit, he did get rid of them as soon as he figured it out. Yeah. But you can't, you, you, you Rob's right. You're, you're human. You have opinion. But the problem is with the technology today, right. much like our president, people don't know how to not say shit in, a, in an environment like text messaging or tweeting yep. they're just they've got to express it whereas 10 15 years ago we would just express it by talking to each other so it i think would disappear yeah yep that's where the problem comes in now you got uh you keyboard have... warriors keyboard terrorists out there that just but yep. what's confounding that's what's confounding yeah. to me about this is that you've got a president and you've got fox news Who's just trying to discredit this, and and what the, what does the president do? He tries to discredit our organizations like the FBI. They're in tatters. The yeah. FBI is in ta really, and, yeah. and even if it was in tatters, is that really how? Is that the message the president of the United States should send? We have people all over the world who were in danger. They're out there, and they they they're not to, They've got to be trusted. These people out there in the world, their 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 lives are on the line. He's, he's trying. He's trying. He cares try, nothing he, except for his own. He's got to. He he can't lose. <laughs> no, he, he what will he's not trying, ever admit to being wrong. No, what he's trying to do is he's trying to do. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's trying to be out in front of this thing, and to try and discredit the FBI. So when the FBI says, "Hey, he, you colluded with Russia." He goes, see, the FBI, they're liars, you know. In other words, anybody that you want to discredit, you call the fake news, you call them incompetent, right. you call them this, you call them that. His only way, he, the only way he knows to fight an argument is by being a bully. At what price? Yes, Bob. And he's trying to create his own Secret Service type uh, spy system. Yes, by by using that organization, what is it, Blackwater? Blackwater. Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about all this, Phil? You've been a little quiet now. Um, uh, I think that uh, the fake news is true. Uh, that, um, you know, he may be, maybe it's gone too far. The pendulum always swings. But uh, I, I look at the news. I look at Fox. I see they're bent. 
I look at CNN and I see their bent and I see the smiles on the newscaster's face as they deliver things that are anti-Trump on anti-Trump stations. And I see it. I don't see how you're not seeing it, but I see it. It's as obvious as 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 the glasses well, on my if, nose. If, 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 if I watch them and what they were saying wasn't really true, but you're calling it fake news when everything they're reporting is absolutely true. They're simply reacting to what's come out on his tweets, what's coming out of right. his mouth. It's their reactions, no, and no, their reactions no. are coming across as news, but it's not news, it's opinion. Well, I, I go over to Fox, and I see the same thing, but they in the, the other direction. Thing. I'm not saying Fox is any less egregious in their okay, actions. Okay, so where do we get our news from, Phil? I, I, I guess I get it from Drudge. It <laughs> you know? used to oh, be, and you're going to believe him? Be, no. Uh, all Drudge is is a portal. You know, I, I no, he's more than a portal he, because what he's doing is he is driving you to the stories he wants you to read. I, he's getting he's getting me to stories that I wouldn't see on other other areas. Yes, but because you, the, he's, he's you. leading you to other fake news. Uh, uh, but, uh, let me tell you that. Alex, but I, I would sooner believe Alex Bennett reporting the news, and I and I would because I know <clears> that be fair. Uh, you, you know, you you might. You might be happy about one thing or another, but I know yeah. that you tell the truth. Okay, two people have their hands up. Uh, Bob Bieberth and then Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bob. I was watching Sky News, which is the British news. Yeah. And they're just as gleeful in some ways oh, yeah. with the things about Trump. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Their, their, their opinion of them, they don't, they don't hide it. Yeah. No. Yeah. None of them uh, uh see here. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin had his hand up next. And, and, you know, being that you've been in radio and television for so long, wasn't it at one time, you know, these news people being hired by the networks were talking heads. They came out, they delivered the news. If they had an opinion, they didn't express that opinion. They just moved on. They moved on to the next the next, well, uh, let me let me story. say this. Ted Turner now, started. Everybody does it. Ted Turner. It doesn't matter what the story is. They Ted, they still yeah. do it. it Ted Turner. It, Ted Turner started CNN. I'm not sure if it's right or wrong, but Ted Turner started CNN because he saw Dan Rather one night read a story, and then he had a little smirk after he read the story, and he says, "I want to yeah. start a news organization that won't do that." Patrick, your hand is up. Uh, I watch my news. I listen to my local news. At ten o'clock or six o'clock, because believe it or not, they don't seem to have a bent to them. I mean, I know most of them are likely liberal, mm -hmm. but their delivery is not the same as Fox or MSNBC. They seem to be more even keel with with the right. way that they report. So that's yeah, right. They know they got a smaller audience. Okay. <laughs> yes. Rob, no. oh, that's Rob. Rob's got something to say here. My question is for Patrick: Are you hearing the same news there that you hear on Fox? Um, I I think the same stories, but no, different different stories. They're no, abbreviated. No, it, what what I'm saying, Phil, is to answer Rob is if it's on the Mueller investigation, if the it's a story on the Mueller investigation, but there's not the bent of Mueller trying to, you know, uh, hang Trump, and then they're also not going the MSNBC way by saying, boy, we can't wait to see him burn at the stake. They're just reporting whatever happened at the hearing, you know, yeah. today. I hope that story is going to be, though, Trump burned at stake. Uh, I worked with well, Greg Jarrett. I, I, I worked with Greg Jarrett from Fox News for, I don't know, four years at Court TV when he was an anchor over there. I heard him on the air. They, I heard a piece of tape that was played that just fired me up. I thought I always liked Greg. I, I, I just I can't the egregious lies and bullshit that he is spouting as opinion is yeah. just. Mind and, and we I got it. We got to go quickly here. But Pet Phil had his hand up. Okay, I got interviewed by Nielsen on the phone last night, and I think they're going to give me another people meter. And so what, uh, as long as I answer the right questions. And then, uh, so what, uh, you know, what what they wanted to know was, you know, what you listen to. I, we could talk about this another Let's night. do it. Let's do it tomorrow night, because this is a whole area for discussion, and it, it could be very interesting. Uh, hey, listen, thanks, everybody. Thanks to Mike for being here. We always like having Bob Everth drop by. Jeff, up there in Connecticut. 
Thank you, Kevin, Phil Meyer, Rob Alfano, the inimitable Patrick Blazik, and of course, uh, Brian. Uh, why don't you all wave goodbye to the audience out there because they'd like to think that you, uh, that you love them. Yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight, and we'll have another one assembled here again tomorrow night for you, come hell or uh, high water. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, the um, uh, what is next? Oh yes, the uh, connect the connection. The the intersection is next over most of the same uh, gab net, uh, and that'll be followed by connections at uh, one o'clock this morning. Hey, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye. Bye.